Hello YouTube, this is Dragonzilla here with a review on what could possibly be the most beautiful figure that Eofauna have ever made. Now my favourite groups of animals are reptiles, but I do like mammals. Well, mostly the prehistoric types. And elephants are my favourites, because they've had a lot of ancestors and relatives in the far distant past, such as the mammoths, mastodons, and this guy, Dinotherium. They had many others, but we'd be here all day if I were to list them all. I got this guy for my birthday, and he was ordered off EverythingDinosaur.com, to which I would like to send a special thank you to, and I'll add the link to the description so that you could get this guy and many other fantastic figures like him. So what was Dinotherium? Well, it was a member of the elephant family, but it was not closely related to the Monde elephant or ancient mammoth. It lived during the Miocene period 20 million years ago, and the last ones died out 2.5 million years ago during the mid Pliocene, possibly due to the coming ice age, or it could have just been climate change in general. The first fossils were discovered in the 19th century, like most other prehistoric animals and dinosaurs. However, it was named in 1829 by a German naturalist named Jean Jacob Carb. I think I'm pronouncing that, my German's a bit rusty. But when he reconstructed the animal, he placed the lower jaw upside down, so it would have looked very odd. However, this error was corrected in 1836, shortly after a complete skull was discovered. Dinotherium means terrible beast. It was one of the largest species of elephant, until Paleoloxodon nomadicus beat it, and it lived alongside our ape ancestors. Onto the model itself, now Eofauna have done it again. They've made another fantastic prehistoric elephant, but this, unlike the other two that have had only one figure made, Dinotherium has been represented by a few other companies, those being Collector, Mojo and Woollyland. And for years, Collectors has been the most dominant, but Eofauna have taken the crown, as their shows what the animal looked like in life. The figure really does remind me of the Dinotherium from Walk with Beasts, but more scientifically accurate. He has the classic elephant grey colour scheme, for the most part, and a bit of redness underneath, and some wrinkly patterns all over the body. The model is shown to be taking a stroll while having a drink at the same time, which I'll get into in a minute. On one side the feet are flat on the ground, and on the other side the feet are half raised up, but where Eofauna's Paleoloxodon was constantly toppling over because the back foot was raised too high and the figure was top heavy which didn't help. Well, I'm happy to report that doesn't happen with Dinotherium and he stands perfectly well so no metal circle items are inquired. It just goes to show that Eofauna have been listening. Dinotherium has some features that not many elephants have such as a long neck, obviously not as long as the sauropods but long enough so that its short trunk can reach down to drink or eat. Now, a lot of reconstructions of Dinotherium do depict the animal with a short trunk. I don't know if there's a debate on how long Dinotherium's trunk was, but if we imagine if the model's trunk was down, it would just slightly pass the tusks, and the way the trunk is posed, it does show the animal having a drink. Looking into the mouth, it is a red colour, and the teeth look like they're half sculpted and half painted. But what makes Dinotherium stand out from the rest of the crowd are the bizarre fan-like tusks that I believe are a debate. They were most likely used as either tools to strip bark off trees and dig for roots, or to battle rival males and predators, if not I doubt any carnivore would want to take down this behemoth. However, like the tusks of the Step Mammoth and Paleoloxodon, they are weathered, added to the realism, and they're very long, unlike collectors whose tusks are pretty small in comparison. Speaking of which, I have taken some pictures of the Ovonus Dinotherium with the collector model, but I'll showcase those at the end. There are really no complaints on the figure that I have, 
nothing out of the ordinary, but the tail at the end appears to have a hole like formation. And it's not just on mine, but it's on everybody's. It's no issue, I thought that I might just point that out. And like his predecessors, he comes with a tradable card. The illustration is as usual very impressive, and whoever did it is an incredible artist, as it shows our Dynatherium, and another one in the background taking a drink giving a little demonstration on how the animal's long neck helped its short trunk to reach water. Unlike Paleoloxodon and the Set Mammoth, because their long tusks helped it split the cards up, Dynatherium on the other hand was a nightmare. To show both model and cards side by side, it's why in this picture you could see half the animal. So now for media appearances. Dynatherium is rarely seen on screen, however it is famous for starring in Walk with Beasts Episode 4, Next of Kin, where an angry bull male chases the Australopithecus clan up a tree and in the area of the grassy plains, even though in reality Dynatherium would have preferred living in forests. The terrible beast would also appear two years later in Walk with Cavemen, which to me feels more like a spin-off to Beasts rather than the whole trilogy, but it's only in stock footage. However, many years before Walk with Beasts, Dynatherium made a little cameo in a 1955 film called Journey to the Beginning of Time, where it was brought to life by stop-motion animation, but sadly it wasn't done by Ray Harryhausen, who I'm pretty sure would have given him a bigger part. In fact, Dynatherium itself has made brief appearances in other documentaries that mostly tend to focus on the woolly mammoth, mainly during the evolution of elephants and mammoths. And it has also appeared in the Jurassic World game as well. That's pretty much what comes to mind. So if you can think of other appearances that Dinotherium has made, whether it was in a movie, documentary, video game or anywhere else, let me know in the comments below. And now on to size then. So here's Dinotherium with Eofauna's Step Mammoth and Paleoloxodon that have both been reviewed on this channel. The links are in the description if you wish to check those out. And all three titans of the elephant family look fantastic together. However, I believe the Step Mammoth and Dinotherium were roughly the same size as each other. And as for Paleoloxodon, well, Nomadicus was a lot bigger than Dinotherium Gigantium. But Antiquus here, I think I think this is correct? Or both were the same height as each other? I'm not gonna lie on this one. I didn't look it up. Sorry guys. But either way, all three figures look great. Here he is with the Schleich Woolly Mammoth and Safari Limited American Mastodon, which has also been reviewed before, link below. And although the Eofauna Dinotherium is taller than these two icons of the Ice Age, in life Dinotherium was gigantic even a lot bigger than the woolly mammoth that has often been mistaken for a giant. Here he is with the collector Gobfotherium and Arsinoetherium, which was also a relative of the elephant. And here he is with some other ancient mammals that he would have lived alongside. Here he is with two synapsids, Adestometasuchus from the Permian. One of these has been reviewed before, link below, as well as some dinosaur figures, well, Pressosuchus was no dinosaur, but it was from the Triassic, link below. Eofauna Dinotherium with NECA GMK or 2001 Godzilla and Bad Eye Creations GMK Ghidorah, and newcomer to the collection, the Safari Limited Shringosaurus, or as I like to call him, Ringo. So final thoughts on the Eofauna Scientific Research Dinotherium. This is truly a fantastic model and a must have if you're a big fan of prehistoric elephants and mammals. And while I still recommend the collector Dinotherium, I say definitely pick this guy up to go alongside it. Since I started reviewing figures on this channel, I have been dying to do a video on Dinotherium, and now that I've reviewed this mighty behemoth, I now feel that a void has been filled. I give Eofauna Scientific Research Dinotherium 5 stars, an incredible figure, and it makes me excited for the future of Eofauna and what they will make next. Whether it's a dinosaur or prehistoric mammal, I'm up for it, especially if it's another elephant. And if so, what could it be? 
an anchor, Stegodon, Playbirdon, the Southern Mammoth. The door is open to any of these magnificent beasts to be seen in model form. I have left the link to EarthingDinosaur.com so that you can order the Eofauna Scientific Research Dinotherium and add this guide to your collection today. And now as promised, I leave you with some photos of the Eofauna Dinotherium with collectors. This is Dragonzilla signing out, take care and I'll see you all next time, bye for now.